forced myself to finish watching this damn film for this review. You can't even latch on to one of these characters. Yeah. Maybe Ving Rhymes. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of Dead Wrong, where we tackle a movie that gets a lot of love that we hate, <laughs> and we're just basically going to tell you that you're dead wrong. <laughs> Before we get started, what are we drinking? Uh, Fire in the Sky Rye IPA. So today we're going to be talking about 2004's Dawn of the Dead remake yeah. that a lot of people really seem to like. This movie gets a lot of praise. Even IMDB gets 7.3 out of 10. It has a 4.3 out of 5 rating on Google reviews. Jesus. Rotten to Tomatoes has 76%, which is high for Rotten Tomatoes. They're so, kind of tough. Yeah, so high across the board. So let's find out what do people like about Dawn of the Dead remake. Mm -hmm. Well, the only way to do that is to look at some reviews. Take a look at an IMDb review here. Dawn of the Dead is one of the best zombie films ever made. Oh boy. It combines a decent storyline good acting, nice cinematography, whatever the fuck that means, good dialogue, good soundtrack, and it's genuinely scary. Ugh. Oh, where do you begin with that? Well, first of all, one of the best <laughs> zombie films ever made. That's highly debatable. Dawn of the Dead, Zombie, Day of the Dead, Night Living Dead, those are all classics. This, in my opinion, doesn't rank anywhere near those. No. 28 Days Later doesn't even come fucking close. Even amongst all of those movies, there's so much debate as to which is the best one. A remake of a Romero movie, and then you're calling this the best ever? How dare you? It has a good storyline. Well, it doesn't really have a storyline at all. It's just no. people trying to survive. There is no real story in this movie at all. Yeah, there's no arc with the characters. You just get planted in the middle of mayhem. There's no story. <laughs> yeah, there's, no, there's nothing to even yeah. say. And not to say the original has anything much more than that, but it expands on all that stuff, the human condition, a lot more than this movie. That's yeah. the story. It, in this case, there is really no story. No. Nice cinematography. Well, the cinematography, in my opinion, this movie actually isn't that great at all. In fact, it's kind of just mundane and boring. And I actually really hate that whole saturated look they give the movie with the super green, everything's or super blue, like everything is super saturated. It doesn't feel realistic. Mm -hmm. And if you want me to be sucked into the movie and feel like I'm there with these characters and sympathize with them, well, it's got to feel realistic. It's got to feel like it's a real place and a real setting. It was that 2000s trend of everything was super saturated. Mm -hmm. Good dialogue. Everything that all the characters say is useless and pointless. I thought the, the, <laughs> the, the dialogue in this movie was horrible because you didn't learn anything about the characters through the dialogue. The dialogue didn't move any story forward. In fact, the dialogue hurt this movie because it was so poor. Yeah. The only actor that was able to do any of this dialogue justice was Ving Rhimes. Everybody else, it was like, you can tell they were reading a shitty script. There was nothing there for the actors to work with. The dialogue didn't drive the story forward. It didn't create anything no. for the movie. It did nothing for it. Good soundtrack. <laughs> Well, there isn't really a soundtrack to this movie. It's just oh. using shitty contemporary songs, forcing them into spots in the movie that where they don't fit. No, it's like a square peg in a round hole. I don't think it fucking works. The music doesn't elevate scenes. No. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do in a horror no. movie it's at like all. It's like the director or whoever was in charge of that was like, I like this song, I'm gonna put it in. Mm -hmm. Why? Why does it suit that scene? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I just <laughs> want it in there. And the actual score was the most generic, boring, run-of-the-mill, shitty, contemporary horror movie score. Just to satisfy the action moments. Yeah, that's all it was. Yeah, you're completely right. The music yeah. was just there to enhance the action, but as far as drama, all that kind of stuff, it did nothing. It doesn't invoke emotion either. It's genuinely scary. This movie isn't really scary at all. In fact, it's like 99% action. Not scary. Neither is this. 
So here's a Google review, five star Google review. Let's see why people like Dawn of the Dead remake. Well, this person says the same thing. This is the best zombie movie ever made. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Tell me why. Why is this the best zombie movie ever made? From the torqued up exciting start featuring the awesome Sarah Pooley's escape to the action in the mall setting, even the end credits featuring Disturbed's manic rock anthem. It's nothing but awesome for zombie horror and action film fans. It's well-directed gory delight. Well, I think you got one thing right and action film fans. Yeah. Out of that entire thing, that's the only thing he got right. Sarah Pooley. I thought she was kind of shitty in this movie. Yeah, she's pretty bland. I didn't root for her at all. I didn't root for anybody, but being the main character, I should be behind mm -hmm. her. She's just the lamest vanilla person on the planet who's got yeah. no character. Her demeanor doesn't change throughout the entire fucking movie. The whole movie is... Yeah, that's it. Huh? Huh? What the fuck is going on? Torqued up exciting start of the movie. And that's a lot of people do talk about the, the beginning of this movie, how it kind of hits you in the face right away. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's one of the best intros to a zombie film. Yeah, a lot happens right off the bat, which is fine. Yeah. But it doesn't stop. Yeah, exactly. And then you don't get to learn about the characters because it's all action and there's no character building or world building because it's just all action. It's a perfect example of starting at the top yeah. and then you can't go any further than that. You can only go down. By the time 20 to 30 minutes comes around in the movie, you're spent. I, I was finished. Yeah. I was drained. I couldn't watch anymore. I forced myself to keep going because yeah. there's too much action. Yeah. Slow it down a bit. Rotten Tomatoes, 76%. Here's what one person said. No matter how much the genre has been beaten to death in the years since its release, Snyder's remake is enduringly scary, thrilling, and incurably watchable time after time. But can we talk about some of the verbiage this guy is using first? Incurably watchable? What the hell does this that This guy's mean? just fucking wanking off. <laughs> oh, look at the way I use words. Incurably watchable. <laughs> no, I wanted to shut this off half hour in. Yeah. I forced myself to finish watching this damn film for this review. You can't even latch on to one of these characters. Yeah. Maybe Ving Rhymes. Enduringly scary. Well, I don't think this movie movie is scary whatsoever. Uh, thrilling, well maybe it's thrilling because the action is so yeah. high torqued. Yes, this movie is maybe a little bit thrilling, but it's definitely not scary and it's not incurably watchable. Thrilling is not the same as suspenseful. This movie has no suspense at all. You can have an action film with tons of suspense. You have to do it properly. This movie doesn't take its time to play out things slowly enough to create suspense. No. To where you're on the edge of your seat and you care. The characters suck. You don't care about them. You don't learn about them. You're not behind them. You don't root for them. No. And there's too many of them. As soon as there's a moment where things calm down and there's a point in the movie where you have a chance to possibly learn about these characters, they introduce more characters. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, okay, now there's these other people, and then there's more, so but like, there's just way too many characters to care about. Then they try to introduce emotion into these scenes with these people who are bitten. The one scene this movie tried to really evoke emotion with was when Trash Can Man Bouncy Bouncy <laughs> gets bit. They tell him that they want to kill him before yeah. he turns, right? And there's so much wrong with that scene. He's the only good actor in the movie, besides Ving Rhymes. He is legitimately believable as a man who's fearing turning. The whole way it's done is like, okay, they're trying to evoke emotion for a character you were just introduced to. Yeah, they didn't take their time. So you don't really care about him. Like, if he was there from the beginning, okay, you were with him for the whole ride. The other character who wants to kill him there's no moral struggle, like, yeah. oh, this sucks that we have to do this. I hate the fact that we ha might have to kill this guy. It's just like, we have to kill him. Yeah. And he's supposed to be like the... The leader. The leader, the hero of the movie. 
and there's no moral struggle. What a wasted scene. The guy's daughter, you don't feel their bond. So you don't really care that much about her being upset right. either. There's no fight. It's yeah, like, there's, she just crumbles there's no and- no fight, like you're gonna fucking shoot my dad? Yeah. Really? Oh, you're going yeah. to hide somewhere. <laughs> like there's no fight, Yeah. you know, with, with that. And that's what a zombie movie really should be about is that fight for keeping your humanity. Speaking of the characters, man, like there's just way too many unbelievable characters. Yeah. Like that sarcastic guy. Nobody is like this man. Yeah, constantly. The thing of a character trait for this guy. Well, he's sarcastic. Okay, and that's all he is. He's nothing but a sarcastic man. His whole existence is being a sarcastic man. <laughs> like, no, there's nobody like that in real life. Yeah, no, nobody I, talks like this in real life. It doesn't even have a comedic effect. There's so many unrealistic things in this movie. Yeah, it's a zombie movie. Zombies are unrealistic, but it's what people do in response mm -hmm. to the zombies, right? Everybody knows how to shoot a gun mm -hmm. right off the bat. The old woman that shows up knows how to shoot a gun. Yeah. Our main character here, uh, you know, uh, Uma Thurman Light, she knows how to shoot a fucking gun right away. Yeah. Like in the original, the SWAT team has to teach the other people how to shoot. Yeah. Because that's the way it r would really be. Yeah, the, on the only person in this movie who has any business knowing how to fire a gun is Ving Rhymes. Yeah. Because he's a cop. Yeah. And maybe the security guard guys. You maybe. can give them some. Maybe. Yeah, you can give them the benefit of the doubt. The mall in this movie makes no sense in the context of what is happening and what is going on. Yeah. Like just that line that they say, we're going to the mall. Why in, would you go to the mall in this it, case? Yeah, in this case, why would you go there? It makes no sense. And they're on foot too. And there's all this mayhem going on. I wouldn't want to go there. Don't you think the place would be packed with zombies? Yeah, they're lucky that it isn't. Could be or should be. It should be. In the original, the only reason they go to the mall is for a pit stop. They stop on the roof where there's no zombies. They know there's no zombies because it's the roof. And it's a quick pit stop and they decide this is a good place mm -hmm. to kind of get our bearings. Yeah, and they're but even... To actually Go there. <laughs> yeah, to seek it out and go. Why? The mall in the original movie, too. There's a narrative yeah. about the mall. All the human condition side of everything, yeah. right? The consumerism and yeah. everything that it's Dawn of the Dead speaks about. Zombies in the mall. That's just yeah, people, just consumers. Yeah, exactly. And this movie doesn't do that. No, and, it, and this movie doesn't use the mall setting to its advantage at all. No, it, I think the mall setting actually hurts this movie immensely. It could have been done anywhere else. Yeah, and should have been. Yeah, it should have been done anywhere else. Even in the original, they go to certain stores too. Yeah, and certain stores have their own little charm and yeah. character. Yeah, they use the mall for their own purposes. They don't do any of that in this. You don't see them raiding anything. You don't even see them fucking getting food. All the things they do in the original make sense. This movie, <laughs> none of it, makes none sense. of it makes sense. I found the movie only started to get good and get its own identity is when they left the mall. Mm -hmm. But by then the movie's. 10 minutes away from being over, so it doesn't matter. Okay, it's finally doing its own thing. It finally has its own identity, and then it's over. The original had a mall. Let's do a mall let's, too. Yeah, let's do it too. Missed the whole fucking point. They have to understand why the original was in a mall. Yeah. This movie basically to me just seems like they saw the success of 28 Days Later, mm -hmm. breath of fresh air in the zombie genre. Yeah. Let's just put the fast moving 28 Days Later zombies in Dawn of the Dead, and we have our remake. <laughs> and there was no thought behind it. It's, it's so unoriginal. The zombies in this movie too, which should be a huge aspect, quite throwaway. And the stupid noises they make, which is this new modern thing <laughs> zombies. <laughs> your vocal cords change too when you're a zombie <laughs> and they shrink by 80%, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, you turn like... into a pterodactyl. Zombies have no character in this. No. It's always good when, like, a zombie movie 
their zombies have like a kind of a, a character, like a design that you know, okay, that's 28 Days Later zombie, that's a Dawn of the Dead 78 zombie, you kind of know. Mm -hmm. These zombies got no character at all. They're right? just generic. The whole movie is just reeks of being generic. Mm -hmm. And that zombie baby! Oh. What the fuck is up with that? Some shitty CGI baby? Like, oh god, oh. it's like, you want us to take this movie serious? Zombie baby does not work in a movie where you're actually supposed to believe this to some degree. Yeah, or care. Yeah. So, those are all the reasons why we think Dawn of the Dead 2004 is a bad movie and doesn't even come anywhere close to the original. Yeah. And we just can't wrap our brains around people who wrote these reviews who's saying it's as good as the original, it's the best zombie movie ever. It fails on every level. Every single level. Except for the action. <laughs> yeah. And it's not even a good action movie at that. No. There's a million other action movies I would watch before this movie. I had such a hard time watching this the second time around. Huh, I turned it off. The only thing I like about this movie, well, two things. I like the fact that Ving Rhymes is able to kind of like make chicken salad out of chicken shit with the dialogue. Yeah. And when they play the game where they're shooting the celebrity looking zombies. Yeah. You know, he's like, Jay Leno. Mm -hmm. It's like, I like that because I would do that. Yeah, it's That's like something it, I would do. It's a know? relatable kind That's of thing. The only relatable thing about this movie is that one little scene. Yeah. Besides that, fuck off. <laughs> this movie sucks. It's, <laughs> I didn't want to finish it, and I did just for you. So, what do you guys think? Dawn of the Dead 2004. Are we dead wrong, or are you dead wrong? <laughs>